Hey guys, it's uh, me, Gitbag the Great in the flesh. Um, I think I'm going to start doing this new uh, series of videos where I talk to you guys in, um, in you know, in the flesh, in person rather than through the microphone uh, while playing Sniper Elite V2 or World of Tanks. Um, I think the main gist of this series is just going to be simple. It's just going to be this kind of like general kind of camera view. I might get a better camera at some point if this one isn't very good. Uh, and what I'm going to do on this series is I'm mainly just going to talk about, uh, you know, uh, video games, popular culture, maybe a tiny bit of politics here and there. Not too much because I know, I know not everyone is into politics. And I mean, I am, but no, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Um, and also maybe a bit of films culture here, here and there as well, and um, and you know sometimes I might talk about controversies, but not too much. I'm gonna try and maybe keep it a little bit light. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully it should be entertaining. Hopefully it should catch on, and hopefully it'll also provide something um, uh, that I can upload quickly when I'm like a bit busy. Because these I could just film easily, like in twenty. 30 minutes simple enough and uh, you know upload them the same day whereas uh, usually with uh, World of Tanks or Sniper Elite 2 videos um, it does take about a day or so to just like get it all together and then upload it because usually I'm a little bit busy uh, to do that um, but uh, I thought I'd just start doing this because it's a nice simple thing to do sometimes you know when you're a little bit uh, behind schedule and you just want to get some stuff out there for the fans well I mean the eight subscribers I have at the moment I mean I can't really say that's a major fan base but uh, anyway I thought we'd start off at the moment with um, in the in this first episode with a with a very particular issue that has been uh, sort of um has been you know niggling at the back of my head uh, recently and that's the controversy over the um, uh, over the release of uh, Star Wars Battlefront, or as it should be called, Star Wars Battlefront 3. Uh, basically, if you don't know, Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2 were a pair of highly successful and very popular uh, first and third person uh, shooting games on the PlayStation 2. And uh, they mainly concentrated on uh, low-level individual uh, tactical combat wherein you could be killed quite easily but uh, how successful you are on the battlefield depended on what class you were best suited to I mean there was quite a number of different classes in each army that you could choose from uh, usually whether or not I was playing as the droids the clones in the in the Clone Wars or the uh, Empire and Rebels in the Galactic Civil War I usually picked the standard sort of Soldiers, so that would have been either the rebel soldiers, stormtrooper, the super battle droid, or the clone trooper, um, because that's what usually best suited me. I was usually the standard infantry guy, really. Um, and uh, I mean, there are several points about the new battlefront that's not included in the uh, old one, and you guys have probably heard about this a lot already if you pay attention to gaming news. And I mean. To be fair, you probably heard about it already anyway, because Battlefront 3 has been in the news a lot recently. Um, and, uh, I mean, the first point to make, really, is that they're not going to be doing the same kind of class system as they did in the uh, first two games. Um, you see, in the first two games, you sort of have make a few kills in a certain match, and then you'd be able to pick all of the different... Um, classes uh, that you had available to you. You know, usually you'd have standard infantry guy, sniper, anti-tank guy, engineer, some sort of uh, commander type, and then some sort of elite trooper, like like for, like say for example um, the elite troopers uh, in the Clone Wars would be, you know, uh, uh, destroyer droids or droidicas for uh, the droids and uh, uh, 
jet troopers for the clones, you know, clone troopers with uh, jetpacks who fired EMP grenades. And, um, and this didn't add a huge amount of variety to the, uh, uh, to um, what was available to play with in the game in terms of classes. But there was enough classes for each army that it meant that uh, you could have a fluid enough uh, battle if you had an, if you had enough people in it. And the ba ma battles were big. Uh, you could go up to thirty two a side, and uh, and I mean there was still a lot of turrets and vehicles to play with. So the bat the combat, despite you know there only being I think it was um, five I think classes on either in each army. Uh, you could still do big fluid battles with a lot of tanks running around, a lot of infantry sniping at each other, uh, um, and uh, and they seem to have um, they seem to have done away with this in uh, Battlefield Three. Of course, in part because it's being developed by Dice and uh, EA, who, uh, as you may know, uh, developed the um, more recent uh, Battlefield games. And I don't have anything against the Battlefield games. I actually really like them. Uh, you know, Battlefield Bad Company 2 is probably one of my favourite uh, first-person shooters of all time. And I have a real soft spot for Battlefield 1942 and Battlefield 2142 as well, which I think is a very underrated game. Um, but the thing is, what, what I think people have just got to realise is that... Um, I think a lot of people have realised this, is that the original Star Wars Battlefronts, uh, Battlefront 1 and Battlefront 2, were vastly different breeds to the Battlefield games. The Battlefield games based themselves from, uh, I think it was probably like Bad, Bad Company 1 onwards, on the idea of unlocking weapons and going through a ranking system, whereas the Battlefront games were based on classes and uh, individual action more so than anything. I mean, there was squads, but individual action was the core of it, and picking the class you likes the most was also the core of it. And they seem to have done away with this in Battlefront Three. Cause, so you're going to be seems like you're going to be operating through a upgrade and unlock system. Um, in very much the same way that you will be with a, I don't know, like say Bad Company 2 or Battlefield 4. And that's, from a purely technical standpoint, that's not a bad thing. But if you want to make it unique, if you really want to make it fresh, I'd say, and this might sound a bit weird, I'd say keep the original, uh, you know, gaming model or. Um, uh, gameplay model rather from the original two battlefronts because while it is an old model by now I mean like the original came out in 2002 and then the second one came out in both 2004 and 2005 um, uh, you know that's what made them unique uh, compared to other shooters of the time and also compared to sort of like the progression system and unlocking weapon systems that uh, Call of Duty and Battlefield have today that does set apart the old Battlefronts quite well um, I mean many people still play them today online um, and so I just feel like you know going with this system that Battlefield has been working with for like since like 2007 might just make Battlefront 3 a little bit less unique, a little bit less interesting, and maybe a bit grey, and just might just suck the, a bit of the fun out of the um, out of the uh, gameplay, especially when you might consider that um, by all the senses and purposes, the uh, there aren't as many sort of like guns in the Star Wars universe as there are in real life. I mean, th there are a lot, but at the same time. <sighs> I don't know how the fluidity and flexibility of the upgrading system could truly flourish and work in Battlefront 3. And um, another thing uh, to point to go back to is that I mentioned that in the original two Battlefronts you could have players of 32 a side, and that included computer players, 
So, you know, battles in Battlefront 2 and 1 were huge. I mean, it was mental. I mean, like, anyone who's played the original uh, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare that came out in 2007 will know what I'm talking about. That also was originally a uh, 32 aside uh, shooting game, and that was just mental. Like, in the original Modern Warfare, you had people just. It was like a. It, you just had people, like, throwing grenades all over the place. Like, I'd be lucky if I lasted more than, like, 30 seconds in one match. But, and, um. And in Battlefront 2, it was probably a little bit easier to survive. As well as also in Battlefront 1, because the maps were usually a bit bigger, and also you could do. You could play in third person as well as first person. Um, but in um, in in Battlefront Three, the uh, maximum uh, player count per team has been really heavily reduced. I'm gonna have to just check this up again. Um, um, because I think I think it's something like. Um, I think it's something like only 20 a side. Um, um, yeah, that's it. It's a maximum of 20 a side. So they cut it down by 12. Now, that might not sound like a huge amount, but th put this into perspective. Um, you know, originally you had 32 a side. Now we have. 20 a side, that's almost cut it by half. So now already the maps are. N might not be able to com accommodate the uh, re vastly reduced size of the teams, which might result in maps uh, feeling a little bit deflated and games just feeling a little bit um, undermanned to some degree. I mean, it's not as um, limited as, say, the. Um, 12 aside on some of the more recent Call of Duty games and uh, I mean I'm not going to try and criticise them now because that's that's their system. I, I disagree that I kind of liked the original like 32 aside in Call of Duty but again I feel like the large uh, sort of player counts per team was what kind of made the original two battlefronts uh, quite unique alongside there being set in the Star Wars universe and also, uh, you know, just having that really uh, f juicy class system. Um, and um, I just feel like that might make it just a little bit too uh, similar to the other first person shooters we've got at the moment. Um, also, uh, another thing they're cutting down vastly on, right? In the original two Battlefronts, uh, you operated across about uh, 10 to 12 worlds, upwards of 30 maps, I think, in both original Battlefronts, and so you had a lot to choose from. I mean, in Battlefront 2, some of them were space battles, and I mean, I was never any good at space battles, but it just added this huge variety to um, the game that was quite missing at the time from other shooters. And still to this day, I mean, the amount of maps you could pick from in Battlefront 1, and especially Battlefront 2, was huge. It was insane. I mean, I lost counts of how many times I played on different maps. Particularly, um, I particularly liked the uh, Kashyyyk map on Battlefront 1, because um, I just thought it was a very funky looking map. I really liked that one. And I also really liked, um, oh, what's it called? Um, the Death Star map on um, Battlefront 2. That was a really cool map. I really liked that. Um, but on um, on Battlefront 3, um, I think it's like uh, four worlds and about 12 maps. So they've cut it down by like two thirds. That, that's, that's insane. They've cut it down even further than the original player count. That's insane, right? I mean... Um, Uh, yeah, twelve maps. That's it, and no space battles either. I mean, they're gonna have sort of like air to ground combat, like 
they did in the original Battlefront way back in 2002. But, um, and that's an interesting prospect. I would like to see how that happens how that would work out with modern graphics and modern physics and you know the uh, system that uh, DICE are going to be working with but um, I mean again that's kind of what made Battlefront 2 so unique is that you could do space battles as well as ground battles and I mean it would have been a lot cooler if you could integrate the two like have Yo, from space battles into ground battles and that was what everyone for a while was thinking was going to happen to Battlefront 3 of course it didn't because uh, EA was smoking really bad pot and just fucked themselves up I don't know I mean it's just really confusing I mean you think like as you go forwards in video game generations you add more and more onto a game but it seems like you know like they've cut down the player count by a third, they cut down the map and sort of world count by two thirds and they've removed one of the defining features of the last game and aren't going to deliver on the one idea that everyone thought was going to be in the game, you know, integrating space battles and ground battles, like going from one to the other in the same uh, clash, and that would have been interesting, I mean imagine how cool it would have been to uh, lift off from a landing pad with like a wing of X-Wings and go up into the sort of a stratosphere to fight like some Tartan patrol cruisers or Imperial Star Destroyers. That would have been so cool. Um, I mean it may be a bit ambitious but then again like Star Wars Battlefront 2 was doing space battles and that came out in like 2005. Like you know it came out 10 years ago and it was doing a an idea that no one had really sort of fully realised before and yeah okay space battles were a bit clunky and they sometimes were a bit you know unworkable but they were still fun and they still kind of like made the game unique I think um, um, what else there's another point I was going to make that's it this is probably the most annoying thing for me personally um and here's the thing, this particular point wasn't perhaps as such a big um, a part of the original two Battlefronts as it might be made out to be, but one thing I really used to like about the original two Battlefronts was the single player, uh, mainly because it just meant that um, it gave you sort of like your own little arena to sort of hone your skills at the game in, and particularly in Battlefront 2 it added an extra level of depth, difficulty and uh, tactical uh, wisdom to it because of course it had like slightly more um, detailed uh, uh, mission objectives like particularly um, I always remember the last mission in the uh, campaign for Battlefront 2 is on Hoth where you're playing as the Imperials and that mission is so hard um, for me at least um, but there's such like detailed mission objectives in it that don't usually tie into the uh, gameplay of the multiplayer and uh, and I mean even Battlefront One with its quite straightforward and plain uh, single player uh, provided you with a you know nice little diatribe and nice little entree to the uh, multiplayer and I quite liked the original Battlefront's multiplayer actually I must admit um, and you know it, I I feel like Battlefront Two had better multiplayer and single player overall but. Battlefront 1's multiplayer was still very good and I do have a soft spot for its single player. Um, so I mean no single player in Battlefront 3 which is very depressing, I mean they have sort of player missions which just sound like in game sort of achievements to me, I mean I th there's probably a better explanation for them really but that's how they sound to me, I mean it's just just sounds like EA just rolling the dice but um, I'm sorry guys that was a terrible joke but um, uh, I think is there another point yes there was another point um, there's gonna be no galactic conquest in Battlefront 3 now here's the thing in Battlefront 1 galactic conquest was kinda plain and it was a bit droll it wasn't very well done 
Battlefront 2, however, Galactic Conquest was brilliant. It had a real depth of strategy. It played out quite weirdly like um, another Star Wars game, uh, Empire at War, which is a natural, proper, real-time strategy game, which I highly recommend you get. Um, if you get the gold, get the gold edition if you can on something like EA, on something like uh, Steam or um, Amazon, uh, because that will include the uh, expansion pack, uh, Forces of Corruption. That's one of my favourite strategy games of all time, actually. Um, uh, but in, even still, uh, going off from that little um, sidestep, uh, the Galactic Conquest mode in Battlefront 2, and to some degree the one in Battlefront 1, had this real layered depth of strategy to it, where you'd get, you know, buy these different power ups depending on how much credits you earned per battle and whether or not you uh, won or were defeated in battles. And it also allowed you to build multiple fleets and equip those fleets with different power-ups have power-ups ready to defend a certain planet so like you know auto turrets more reinforcements uh, sort of Jedi or Sith rather um, uh, hero to help you on the ground that you could play as uh, which was actually a really good improvement over Battlefront 1 I mean I didn't mind in Battlefront 1 that you, you couldn't play as the heroes but uh, adding them to play as in Battlefront 2 was just brilliant. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I had so much fun when I'd just be ripping through wave after wave of battle droids on the Mustafar map, and I'd unlock the ability to, for a short while to play as Obi Wan Kenobi, and I just slaughter just dozens of droids. It was so satisfying. And to be fair, I suppose heroes were a little bit overpowered in certain senses in Battlefront 2, but at the same time, usually I found there were so many players on the opposite team that you would get killed sooner or later, and that kind of balanced it out. Maybe they were a little bit overpowered, but they did add this real depth of glorious slaughter and just strategy to it. Um, and, you know, uh, you know, the other players on your team, not the computer players of course, could get the um, uh, hero as well, and players on the enemy team could get it as well, so it wasn't completely exclusive, which I think did balance it out a little bit. Um, and I mean, I think there's going to be some sort of hero system in uh, Battlefront 3, but they haven't really made it fully clear how that's really going to operate, how you're going to be able to use the heroes. I mean, there's going to be hero vehicles by the looks of the trailer they released recently with the Millennium Falcon, um, and also uh, Boba Fett, but uh, I'm not entirely sure how it's worked. They haven't really told us a huge deal about it. Um, oh, this is that. And, uh, of course, there's going to be a premium version, which... Uh, kind of ticks me off. Uh, basically it just comes with extra sort of collectibles and skins and stuff and that does improve the gameplay a little bit but I mean for like ten dollars or seven fifty pounds more than the average price I mean it's just not worth it really is it? I mean I guess it's just EA being up to their old tricks really of uh, uh, post uh, 2007 of just being greedy fucks and really just not caring about the uh, consumer in general really I mean it's kind of weird actually for like a while before 2007 or so before the 7th um, generation of games I think EA were reasonable enough towards their uh, consumer base, but it seems like since then, since like since the onset of like on real explosion of online gaming, uh, they've really turned into a bunch of right old greedy bastards, haven't they? I mean, just have to look at uh, how many battle packs and premium uh, malarkey they included with all the different editions of Battlefield Hardline, which really wasn't even that improve much of an improvement over the previous Battlefield and in all honesty should have been just made as a expansion pack to Battlefield 4. So yeah there's going to be battle packs, premium accounts and which I mean premium account I don't really have a problem with. Battle packs and like 
uh, premium deluxe edition of certain games I have a problem with, like, I mean, if there's a premium account that grants you, like, um, 25 or 50% extra XP per battle, that's not really something I have a problem with. If there is a premium version of the game or a premium battle pack, however, that allows you to get a better weapon quicker or gives you features of the game that are better than in the standard version, then I think that's slightly bullshitty. I mean, why don't you just include them in the game or include them at a later date as downloadable DLC or if you want people to pay for them make them dirt cheap because I mean like I remember back in the day like when they released uh, expansion packs for things like uh, Company of Heroes or the original Dawn of War they used to be dirt cheap um, at least for the time um, so yeah I mean the inclusion of like premium battle packs and stuff like that in Battlefront 3 is quite worrying uh, probably a good indicator that it's not going to be as unique as say the original two battlefronts um, and probably is just going to be quite similar to current first person shooters and that's another thing actually it doesn't have any third person shooter mode which I can actually kind of live without um, I actually did mostly when I used to play battlefront 2 all the time play in third person but uh, I can deal without that at maybe a pinch. The one thing I can't deal without though is for some bizarre reason, right? In Battlefront 3, Battlefield 3, Battlefried 3, making up making it sound like I'm talking about uh fry up here. Um in Battlefield 3, they're not gonna allow you to aim down the iron sights. And Okay, sure, the idea of aiming down the iron sights hasn't been really explored much in previous Star Wars games. Uh, um, but it has been a feature of a lot. Like, it's been a feature of, like, the shooting mechanics in Star Wars Jedi Knight, Jedi uh, Academy, uh, the original two battlefronts when you went into first person mode, and other games like that. And uh, I just don't understand that, to be honest. I mean,. Dice and EA have included for aiming down the iron sights in their previous first person shooters, and so I don't know why they didn't include it in this. Um, and that just really worries me. It just makes me feel like the um, gameplay is just going to be really bland. It's just going to be really straightforward. And, uh, you know, the limited inclusion of vehicles along with that, and. Uh, the limited number of game modes where um, I think it's going to be uh, uh, I think it's going to be standard deathmatch and then also uh, the Empire versus the Rebels escorting an 8080 uh, I mean those two modes sound fun but there's not much variation really I mean why not have something like the original Battle of Hoth you know where uh, you know the Imperials had those two 8080s and they just use them as battering rams but if the rebels destroyed them then they crippled the imperials they also took a lot of battering to take down those two AT-ATs I mean why not include that that was yeah, that was really good um, there was a point wasn't there oh yes um, this is kind of like a bit of a geeky point and a bit of like a mild one it doesn't really impact much on the gameplay or the uh, ethos of the game well, it kind of does or the um, design of the game really uh, basically, um, in the Star Wars universe, there's this planet called uh, uh, Solist. That's a volcanic ash planet, right? And you'd think if it was covered in volcanoes and all that stuff, it'd probably have quite an arid sort of atmosphere. You know, quite discoloured. In the trailer, the atmosphere's fine. It's clear as day. You know, you could, like read the newspaper through it, it's so clear and that just goes completely not only against Star Wars lore but actual scientific fact like the thing is there's a lot of points about Star Wars Battlefront 3 that make me really worry about it, whether or not it's going to be a good game or not but that one really makes me worry like if they haven't paid enough attention to even that one small detail that really makes me worry and 
originally I thought when I heard about the original few things that weren't going to be included in Battlefront 3 I was thinking oh, it was just going to be a little bit disappointing it's still going to be a good game but then I heard about all this like about the design of the planet Solist uh, the uh, the inclusion of only like two or three modes the inclusion of so few planets and maps and um, this inclusion of the uh, escorting the AT-AT -AT system which just sounds like a rip off of the uh, the old Battle of Hoth map on Battlefront 2 uh, I mean everything combined that we've heard about over the last couple of months just makes me think this is going to be a terrible game I just feel like it's it's going to have transcended from uh, one of the most disappointing games of 2015 to one of the worst. And I don't want to feel like that. I want it to be at least one of the disappointing games of 2015. I'd rather have it be one of the best games of 2015. But the way EA and DICE are treating this, you know, this thing that we've been waiting for at least eight years for at least just really makes me worry it's, it's got so much missing from it from the original two games and so much that just makes it uh, not all that dissimilar from the current first person shooters that just makes me think it's not going to be that great I mean hopefully at the time by the time it will come out they have, they'll have included a lot of the stuff they've said they would have taken out and the uh, reviews will be good so I'll be promptly prompt, prompted to get a copy of it but how it's going at the moment I don't see myself doing that I mean it just seems like it's going to be a real waste of time and that kind of makes me sad a bit because to be honest with you Battlefront 2 is definitely one of my top 10 games of all time not just shooters like all games is one of my favourite games of all time and it was clunky and it was had its faults but you know it was something unique in a way and I might be talking with rose tinted glasses here but it really had something fresh at the time it was released and it's still fresh today so I just feel like the way EA and DICE are treating it at the moment it's just not going to live up to the hype at all and it might end up being genuinely bad so you know I hope they do the right thing I hope they include a lot of the stuff they said they were going to take out but as it is doesn't look like that's going to happen and that's kind of sad um, I mean there are many other Star Wars games in the future that I'm looking forward to and hopefully uh, Star Wars Episode 7 The Force Awakens when that comes out in cinemas later this year hopefully that should uh sweeten the blow or soften the blow as it's as it's said um, uh, but we'll only know until then uh, hopefully Battlefront 3 should be a good game I'm hoping it's going to be a good game I'm hoping it's going to be one of the best games of the year but um, I guess we'll just have to wait and see really I mean it's just as it is now it doesn't sound like it's going to be great um, of course compared to the original two Battlefronts which I'm again I'm speaking with rose tinted glasses I have a very biased view of particularly Battlefront 2 but yeah I mean for me speaking from both a fan standpoint of Battlefront 2 and there's just a generally sort of standoff logical trying to be as objective as I can standpoint doesn't sound like it's going to be great you know I mean logical sort of conclusions would assume that you'd include more over time as the game generations go onwards and onwards but I mean they're not doing that so it doesn't sound great uh, but yeah hopefully we'll just wait and see hopefully it'll be good um, but all the news that's been coming out lately doesn't mean anything that's gonna happen hopefully you'll have a bit more like detailed news soon as to how it's going to turn out now maybe maybe you might do a shorter uh, vlog of it somewhere in the future but uh, I think I've covered most of the points there, most of the major points. There might be some small tweaks and uh, tweaks that they're going to make in the future. Uh, but they haven't really announced much about it for the last week or so. So, uh, 
I think it's going to be pretty quiet on that front for a little bit. But anyway, um, I think I've just gotten a lot of stuff off my chest there. Of a lot of uh, cleared up a lot of stuff as well. Um, uh, I think next time I do this, uh, I mean, whenever I do one of these videos, it will just be on what's happening at the moment, like in terms of games, films, and just popular culture and whatever. Uh, I enjoyed this, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it as much as I have had filming it and just chatting at you for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes. But um, yeah, I think I am going to do some more of these in the future. And if you want to know, actually, a bit more about Battlefront 3, uh, definitely check the EAN DICE websites and check also... Uh, and any other sort of uh, gaming news website, particularly like PC Gamer or something like that, if you want to keep up to date with it. Also, a good one uh, to check out is um, if you've heard of this guy, he's a big gamer, uh, Angry Joe. Uh, check out his YouTube channel because he's done quite a few uh, little vlogs as well on uh, the release of Battlefront 3. So, uh, check out all that stuff if you want uh, any up to, up to date news on it um, because they're probably a little bit more on the ball than I am, really. Uh, but yeah, I think I think we'll leave it there. And uh, next time, uh, I think we'll yeah, I think we'll just like do it as it comes on this series. Like, uh, uh, you know, I won't really plan too far into into the future with this particular video series. I'll just do subjects as they come. You know, uh, try to keep it fresh. But anyway, uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this um, as much as I have enjoyed filming it. And until next time, have fun whatever you're playing, have fun with whatever you're watching, and I'll see you guys next time on the battlefield.